now we'll start recording. <laughs> Not going to record the song. Um, here's what we're doing. Okay. Like I said, we are still solving quadratics, but when factoring doesn't work and graphing doesn't work and completing the square, which you'll learn tomorrow, when do I see you? Tomorrow doesn't work. Um, this is the one that always works. It's also the worst one, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, so I don't recommend that you do the quadratic formula as your first version. Like if you can find a different way, graphing, factoring, uh, completing the square, if you can do it a different way, there are ways that are better and easier to do it. But this is the one that no matter what equation you have, it will always work, okay? Um, so when in doubt, if you're like, I cannot figure out how this factors or I cannot figure out how to graph it, do the quadratic formula, it will always work, okay? Um, so here's what we do. You have this format, right? We have an A, a B, and a C set equal to zero again, and we have this formula to plug it into. Now, quadratic formula leaves a whole lot of room for silly mistakes, a whole lot, because we have so many numbers and so many positives and negatives and divisions and square roots and all of it. So I need you to be on your A game right now <laughs> and figure out how to plug this in the right way from the get-go so you don't make these silly mistakes, okay? Because inevitably, I think it's the easiest one and the hardest one all at the same time, just because of the nature of it. Um, so here it is. You have an A term of two, you have a B term of negative one, and you have a C term of negative four, and we are plugging that into this formula. So a negative B right now is what? A positive one. So this is one plus or minus. That means we have two answers, right? Because we're going to go one plus something, and we're going to go one minus that same something and divide. Um, so plus or minus the square root. Um, here's where a lot of the mistakes get, get made. What is B? Negative one, but we're squaring it, okay? Put parentheses around it. Negative one squared, okay? Um, so negative one squared minus four times A, which is two, times C, which is negative four. Okay, so that's the top of our equation. We put that over two times what? Two times A, which is two, so two times two. Okay, now here's the deal. You cannot just plug that into your calculator because your calculator doesn't do plus or minus for you. So you need to do two different problems. You need to do the one where you're adding and the one where you're subtracting, but you're not just gonna plug everything in. Here's what I highly recommend to you. I highly, highly recommend that you take this information and you plug it into your calculator exactly how you see it, not the square root of, just what's under the radical. This is the discriminant, actually, okay? Take that and plug it into your calculator right now and then tell me what you get. 33? Is everybody getting 33? Good work, team. That's good. That's what we like to see. Um, so this is 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 over 4. You're done. Good? See how easy that is when you just plug it into your calculator the right way? Um, we want simplest radical form for these, which is why we're just going to leave the square root of 33 in there. Now, you could... Plug it in, 1 plus the square root of 33, get a decimal, hit enter, then divide by 4, okay? And then 1 minus the square root of 33, enter, divided by 4. And you would get your two decimal answers. But this right here is saying x is going to be those two things in simplest radical form, okay? Leave it in simplest radical form unless it's a real world problem or they tell you to round. So we're going to leave it in simplest radical. It's going to look like that. Um, okay, another fun fact for you. Does anyone see an axis of symmetry? Look at this. Negative B over 2A. Isn't that fantastic? 
axis of symmetry right there in the problem. Okay, moving on to letter B here. What do you have to do first to be able to put this into the quadratic formula? Subtract 3. So 2x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so now let's plug it in. x equals negative B. What is that? A positive 2 plus or minus the square root of What comes next? Negative two. negative 2 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. Okay, so we have all that on top divided by what? 2 times 2, right? 2 times your A value, so 2 times 2. Um, okay, so with this one, when we simplify it, you're going to plug this into your calculator, plug it in and tell me what you get, exactly how you see it, parentheses and all. I don't care, by the way, if you go 4 times 2 times negative 3 with the times button, that's okay. It doesn't have to be parentheses there, but it has to be parentheses around the negative 2. What? 28. Uh, 28, yes. Okay, so this is 2, try it with a pen. 2 plus or minus the square root of 28 over 4. Does anyone see something else we can do here? Um, we can't quite yet. How do we simplify? Because we can't just do 2 and 4 divided by 2 because we aren't doing anything with our rad 28 then, right? You have to do both parts of the expression if we're going to simplify. Is there a simpler rad 28? 4 and 7, okay? So you do need to put it into simplest radical form. So this rad 28 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. So we get 2 plus or minus 2 rad 7 over 4. Is that our simplest answer? Nope. We got to divide, right? Everything there is divisible by 2. So we get um, divide by 2 and all of these. This becomes 1 half, 1 half. Um, so it's 1 plus or minus 1 rad 7 is just rad 7 all over what? 2. two. That is your simplest answer. Yeah, so what did you do for the, uh, two and four? So we divided by 2 and divided by 2, right? Everything here, 2, 2, and 4, everything's divisible by 2. So we divided everything by 2. We just reduced our fractions. Oh, so it's 2 over 2. Three. It's 2 over 4 right here. So that becomes 1 over 2. This is 2 over 4. That becomes 1 over 2. So essentially, there's a 1 out in front here, but you don't have to put that 1 in. How many answers is that? 2. 2, because it's 1 plus the square root of 7, and it's 1 minus the square root of 7. So two answers. Those are your two answers. Okay. Last one of these before we hit a real-world problem. Um... Plugging this into the quadratic formula, your a is 1, your b is 6, your c is 9. So x equals what? Negative 6, Negative six plus or minus the square root of? Negative 6. Not negative 6. What's b? Uh -oh. 6 squared. Um, if it's positive, you don't have to put parentheses around it. But I might just always put parentheses around it so you don't ever forget when it's negative. Okay, um, so maybe just get in the habit of always putting parentheses. It, it's not wrong to put the parentheses. So b squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, all over 2 times 1. All right, simplify. Plug this into your calculator and tell me what you get. Um, and by the way, you don't have to put it in your calculator. You can do it in your head if you want. I just think the calculator isn't going to make a mistake, and sometimes your brain misses negatives, and that's where things usually go awry. What do you get? 
negative six plus or minus the square root of zero over two. Did everyone get zero? Okay, what is the square root of zero? Zero. Zero times zero is zero, right? So this is basically saying negative six plus zero divided by two and negative six minus zero divided by two. So when this is a perfect square, you wanna keep simplifying, keep going as far as you can. So negative six plus zero is a negative six divided by two is a negative three. Negative six minus zero is a negative six divided by two is a negative three. So your answer on this is just x equals negative three. Okay, if you notice, did anyone notice that that was actually factorable? This is one of those x plus three squared, right? It's a perfect square trinomial. Um, so you get one answer of negative three. You don't need to write it twice, even though technically we found it twice. Questions on that? Okay, so the idea with quadratic formula is sometimes it's not going to be simplifiable at all, right? That was that first problem that we did. Sometimes there's going to be a radical that you can simplify, but it still doesn't work out to a nice number. Other times you're going to be able to break it down to a number for your answer or maybe two nice numbers, two integers for your answer. Okay, okay. Um, let's look at example two here. And then we have the discriminant, which is probably the easiest thing you'll do in this chapter. And we'll be done. Um, example two, it says you sell CDs. The profit is represented by the equation P equals negative X squared plus 48 X minus 300, where P is profit and X is the price of each CD. What would X need to be to make a profit of 200. So think about that. If we want our profit to be 200, all you're gonna do is take the 200 and plug it in there. I didn't leave you a lot of room there, sorry. We're gonna do it off to the side here. Um, so it's gonna be 200 equals negative x squared plus 48x minus 300. Um, now, when it's these numbers, this is not going to be easily factorable. Um, so we're going to use the quadratic formula. What do I need to do first? If we want our profit to be 200, it looks like this. What do we do? Yeah, take away the 200 because we always need it equal to zero. So you get zero equals negative x squared plus 48x minus 500. Okay, so we're gonna plug that into our quadratic formula. X equals negative B, so negative 48, plus or minus the square root of what? B is your 48, right? So 48 squared minus four, what's A? It's not one, negative one and negative 500, and that's all over two times negative one. Okay, what do you do from here? Plug in this piece, right? 48 squared minus four times negative one times negative five What do you get? That is 304. So it's negative 48 plus or minus the square root of 304 over negative two. Now here's the deal. This is a real world problem. They're asking you, what would X need to be to make a profit of $200? So we're looking for X. We're trying to figure out the price of a CD. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this in, plug in negative 48 plus the square root of 304. Okay, hit enter and then divide by negative two. What do you get for that? 
Um, so because it's money, we'll just round to two decimal places. So 1528 for that one. Then do minus negative 48 minus the square root of 304. Hit enter on your calculator and then divided by negative two. And what do you get for that one? Mm -hmm. Oops. Okay. Okay. Now let's be logical shoppers, sellers, buyers, all of it. The question is, what do you need to sell a CD for to make a profit of 200? Uh, 200? Yes. And these are our answers. Are people going to pay $32 for a CD? You'll make a profit of 200 with either of these, right? So if your profit is 200 either way with this, it's a funky situation, right? Um, you're better off charging the cheaper one because you're still going to make the same amount of profit, but people are actually going to buy it because it's not outrageously priced. Right, but your profit is the same. It's a $200 profit. It's, it's the idea of a parabola, right? It's a quadratic, so profit here versus profit here. In other words, there would end up being more overhead or more something involved the other way that's gonna still end up with a $200 profit. I know, it's an odd thought. Um, but this would be the one that we want to charge then, right? We're not trying to rip people off. Charge them the good one. Um, questions on that? One was because we added, and one was because we subtracted. Yes, plus or minus. Um, okay, discriminant. And this is pretty straightforward. I feel like um, this usually goes quite well for people. So the discriminant, it doesn't tell you what your answers are, right? Quadratic formula says x equals something. This does not do that. The discriminant tells you how many answers you'll have. Okay, how many answers will you have? So here's the idea. If your discriminant, that is not a highlighter. If your discriminant is a positive number, you will have two real solutions or two x-intercepts, right? Or finding our x-intercepts here. So if it's a positive number, when you plug in this piece, the b squared minus 4ac, you will get two real solutions. If your discriminant, that b squared minus 4ac, is zero, so if you plug it in and you get zero under your square root symbol, which is one of them we did, right? How many solutions did we get on that problem? One, right? That's where we got x equals negative three. So one solution or one intercept. And if your discriminant is negative, you get no solution or no intercepts. Now think about that for me. Can anyone tell me, looking at this, why if this is a negative number, we get no solutions? What's the issue there? Sean? Uh, you can't uh, is on yeah, you can't square root a negative number. Now, I'll teach you, right? I love math back there. Um, imaginary. imaginary numbers, right? But we're not to imaginary numbers yet. We'll get to imaginary numbers. The square root of negative one is an imaginary number. Um, we're talking real solutions, real numbers. Okay. So when it is positive, two real solutions. When it's zero, one real solution. When it's negative, there are no real solutions. There are imaginaries, but there are no real solutions. Okay? Imaginaries are real fun. You're going to love it. Um, we're almost there. We're getting there. Can I basically just make up my own imaginary number? Since, since they're imaginary? It's not that kind of imaginary, but no, you can't. I mean, yeah. You won't be able to just make up an answer to a problem I'm giving you because it's an imaginary answer, I guess, yeah, is what like, I'm saying. I want to make my own number and like make oh. whatever I want, that kind of thing. I mean, I guess if it's imaginary, sure, go for it. Awesome. <laughs> it's imaginary. It doesn't exist. Um, okay. Example three then, and this is all we're doing with the discriminant. 
It says determine the number, come back, the number of real solutions or x-intercepts is what we're looking for. So with this, you don't need to plug into the quadratic formula. All you need is the b squared minus 4ac, okay? You don't need to plug everything in. We are just taking this piece of it to see how many solutions we have. So in this setup, b squared would be negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 7. Plug that into your calculator exactly how we see it, just like you did on all the other ones. What do you get? Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times 7. Negative 47. Okay, so your answer here is a negative number. How many solutions is that going to get you? How many real solutions? Zero, right? We would say there are no real solutions. Okay, no x-intercepts is another way of saying it. So they might in the answers say no real solution, no x-intercept. I don't need you to say both those things. You can just say no real solution. So once we start doing like imaginary numbers, are we going to come back to this, this chapter and like do it all? With imaginary show up in this chapter. Mm -hmm. cool. Four, eight imaginary numbers. Yeah, it's good stuff. You're going to love it. Um, okay, look at letter B here. Um, B squared minus 4AC is our discriminant. So how many solutions would we get? We'll take a negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times 5. B squared minus 4AC. Plug that into your calculator. What do you get? What'd you get? 215? No, good. It's not 215. What did you get? Nope. 49. 49, yes. Um, so here's the deal, guys. This is not your answer. 49 is not your answer. What is your answer? Uh, two, two real solutions. If it's a positive number, you get two real solutions. Okay, or two x-intercepts is what you would end up with. All right, last one. What do you got to do here? Add the 49. Set it equal to zero first. So x squared minus 14x plus 49 equals zero. So you get b squared, negative 14, put parentheses around it, negative 14 squared minus 2, not 2, minus 4, times 1, times 49. B squared minus 4AC. If you plug that in, what do you get? Did you get it? It's zero. Yep. And if it is zero, how many real solutions? One real solution. Okay, so when they ask you about the discriminant, they're asking how many answers do you have? When they're saying find X, that's when you plug it into the whole quadratic formula. Okay, here you go, complex numbers. There's your imaginaries coming up, four, eight. We're almost there. Um, all right, that's all I got for you. Can I, can I write something?